Hello everyone, welcome to Tony Talks. Thank you for 2023. It is an amazing achievement. And I want to extend my heartfelt thanks to each and every one of you who has supported, watched, and subscribed to my YouTube channel. Thank you. And I said 2024 is our year of great blessings. Um, thank you from Tony Talks. Cut all the three episodes that have been released in manageable pieces. I'll just pick up the pressure points, the punchlines, so that we can have this conversation in context without putting everything out there. The point that we just want to get to is Joshua was not of God. He was not being used by God. He had nothing, no ounce of purity in him. God always vindicates me. And I've told you so many times. He is with us. More than life, he is please. With them. They will not stand the test of time. All of them will crumble to the ground. Joshua might be hiding wherever he is, but his day of reckoning is upon him. Soon he will come out and apologize. Most of you have been asking me, why would he hide? Why would he fake his death? The crimes, atrocities that this man called Joshua brought to humanity are beyond Boko Haram. You can never see the picture if you're in the frame and you can never read the label. If you are in the container, no, my life. I, I don't have anything against the followers of these Jagabans because they are in the picture. They are in the container. They are in this confined belief system of thinking or believing that these men are being used by God. Continue listening. Each one that goes home tries to contact his brothers, contact his friend U.S., contact those in the UK. What do you have to say? I never experienced anything like that before, but I will bring all of this back to my country. I will tell people. Things started changing fast. Started moving on, on a fast lane. You see long queues, hundreds of people. Visitors are coming, whites are coming. It's, 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 it's something huge. Those who came from UK for the first time, he paid their tickets. Those who came from America, he paid. Every part of the world, he was paying. For TB Joshua, it was a game and a trap that he sets for the white people. Love and life. I need to make these white people my disciple. When I first got to Lagos Airport, we told them that we were going to the synagogue church for nations. Oh! Go through, go through. It was like a free pass entry to anything. It's just like, oh, go through, go through. I'm called, oh, yeah, you're here. Yes, off you go. Off. Right from the moment that I landed, I just got super emotional. I want to know the God of the Gospels. I want to see those miracles. And if I can't see them and they're not real, I'm out of here. The whites, they didn't come to become disciples. It's when they got to the synagogue church. That's when the manipulation starts. Some intelligent disciples have been sent to stalk on the whites. It's not everybody that we approach. We look at you when we see the way you fall into what is happening in the synagogue church. We'll come after you. They don't know we are picking them. But myself and TB Joshua, we know what we were doing. He loves young ones, right? He loves young ones, teenagers. We don't go for the old people. The young ones, they are very vulnerable. And they are the easy people to manipulate, especially unmarried people. Especially unmarried young people. I was 17 years old. I got my A-level results while I was in Nigeria. But I couldn't care less about them. I wanted to be like Jesus. I wanted to be like T.B. Joshua. I wish I could have that connection with God. I wanted to be like him. He said... Tell them that they should be missionary for the synagogue. Love and life. You stay here three months, you become uh, like C.B. Joshua. Let me tell you, he's going to open branches in UK, in America, and everywhere. He's not going to send us to go there. You are the best that to go there. Make them begin to crave to be disciples. Begin to surrender their lives to Joshua. When Rachel came, Rachel was behaving like a boy walking like a boy he said that girl why don't you ask her to stay here and she was happy this alert recruited me my bags were pulled out of the truck my friend was put on the plane my parents collected her at heathrow she was basically crying like 
Ray's not coming back. She's like stayed there. A Nigerian sister came to me and said, Ibi Joshua wants to meet you. There's an urgency there. No, 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 you have to come now. You have to come now. And when I entered, the Nigerian sister kind of pushed me to kneel down, kneel down. And immediately TV Joshua said, God's told me you're going to stay. You're meant to be here. You're going to stay with me forever. We were living on site. I will be church, yes, you live at the compound. You don't leave the compound. There's armed men. They will get to church. Guns. Be there's busy. Wall, there's barbed fencing. The windows are blacked out. The stairs were concrete. The walls were concrete. It felt like a, a labyrinth. You're told never to leave. You could get killed. You could get attacked. The outside of the compound is terrifying. The disciples were a group of about 100 at a time from Nigeria, from the UK, from America, and usually quite young people. When I had this opportunity, I was like, this is what I've been looking for. This is a prophet who has been called by God. God speaks to him directly. He'll be able to guide me in how I can live my life. There were a male dormitory and a female dormitory. There was a culture of like nakedness in the room. It was good to be body positive and not have any clothes on. Just being completely naked in the female dorm room, my mind instantly went to Adam and Eve. I immediately thought, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. I got taken by two women and they stripped me naked and they pushed me in a shower and turned the water on. And I, I remember saying something along the lines of, I can do it. And they were like, no, we, we are sisters now. We're here to do this for you. I didn't really know anyone's last name, really their age. I was Sister Kara. I was Sister Annika. That was immediately encouraged to see each other as family. You can be tempted by your friends. A love and light, Father, please. Mother. Love and light. Sisters. This video is very interesting. You are mm. the one leading you to do evil. We try to persuade them to willingly separate from their people. To willingly stop that constant communication with their homes. You couldn't contact anyone outside. I didn't have my own cell phone. We didn't really access to our own personal email. We didn't have our passports. They held them for us. Oh, my passport. Take my pass is over. Your pass is over now. Every relationship you have in this world, you have to cut them off. You make sure you do that. You have cut them off, my little family. Jesus used to say to his disciples, leave your father and mother and join me. That's what we had all done. We had left our families. I, I suggest to any mums and dads out there who've got kids like mine, bring them to the synagogue church of all nations and let, let the Lord move in them. When I first arrived, it was only a couple of days that I started hearing disciples calling him daddy. We all called him daddy. Everybody called him daddy. He tried to like look after us and you know, we would all call him daddy. I thought it was a bit odd, but I brushed it aside. You know, I dismissed it. I can't really look back and say that my childhood was really happy. And he seemed to be really um, caring towards me and different. Like a really warm and friendly guy. He had like this office, which had a cupboard in it, but I had a whole bunch of like imported sweets. And he kind of used these as like little treats for people. Almost like you were kids. He'd always sit on a swivel chair and sometimes he'd push off the wall and go, wee! And everyone would go, oh, he's so silly. We'd revel in that. Well, silly daddy. It's like you're in this kind of perpetual childhood state because he also treats you like a child. Um, and he calls you a child. There was this kind of like regression that took place. You just like giggle like a kid and stuff. It was so strange. I want to be just like Prophet Joshua. Oh, you say you want to be just like Prophet Joshua. You want to be to Jesus. Hallelujah. I was 17, but I felt like a 12-year-old, like I was very young in terms of understanding of the world. I remember just feeling like I feel at home. Like I felt these kind of warm sensations. It's just manipulation. Just trying to manipulate them. And my wife says, I'm going to go to the With good words, you know, with love. <sighs> Already I know there are some people who are saying these were bought actors. 
these were paid to come and testify. You can't pay everyone, my people. Not everyone has a prize. These are people that had an experience with TB Joshua. These are people that are coming out to express what they went through in the hands of your so-called holy philanthropic loving spiritual father called TB Joshua. Now tell me, draw a line. Is there any difference between TB Joshua and Boko Haram? Tell me if there is. Oh, he did this to orphanages. Oh, he was philanthropic. Oh, he preached love. Oh, that was a facade, my people. Oh, that was a cover-up. The dude knew what he was doing. This is bad. It's sad. And it's not only Joshua that is doing this. All of them, they are involved in these cults. It's our sisters, our daughters, that are on the receiving end of all these atrocities. That's why I always discourage you to finance these shrines. Every time you give money to any of these prophetic shrines, you are literally becoming, unconsciously becoming an accomplice to all these atrocities. Without your money, they wouldn't have the power and the influence to destroy lives as they have been doing it or as they are doing. Think twice, my people. More episodes are coming. We'll bring them for you, for your analysis. At the end of the day, it's the flock that we are fighting for. Love and we don't care about Joshua. We don't care about the rest of these Draculas, these Bombo class. We care so much about the church, the body of Christ. The mostly affected are women. And they are the main target of these agents of darkness. He was a man of love. He was philanthropic. To hell with his philanthropy. And to hell with his messages of love. This man was diabolic. Take it or leave it. Get out of here if it offends you. Too gullible for nothing, man. Okay. I think I see part two. Mumbo. Um, part two. Mumbo. This is part two. Yeah. Of Ruth. If he came into any room and he didn't stand up, that would be considered an offense. We weren't allowed to read anything. We weren't allowed to watch movies. You know, he would say what you should wear, what you shouldn't. There was a law in the studio. If you want to go and pee, you have to stop by his office. I promise to submit myself. To all I will be in the church to share be prison. One of my jobs was writing articles for the church. He called me in and he said, where's the article? Have you not published it yet? And I said, oh, sorry, sir, I've not published it yet. Um, and then he just slapped me. TV Joshua had a massive temper. You two people coming and they would be like, he's hot, hey, he's hot. Daddy's hot. And you would literally see everybody just scatter. If you didn't run, you'd get an almighty big slap no. around the face. <laughs> and I witnessed that regularly. You didn't see it as physical abuse. We were told it's an honor to get slapped by me because I'm next to Jesus. He wants to control everybody, everything. Our bathroom stalls had just like curtains on them. And if anyone thought you were doing anything, they could just, you know, flip the curtain. We woke you. Even your record while you are taking your shower in the bathroom. It's there. Everything is there. Okay, my people, hold up a minute. This one caught my attention. Now it makes sense. And now I understand why so many victims are silent. Because TB Joshua has some implicating content or some implicating details, scenarios, or even activities of some of his disciples, if not all of his disciples. I remember in one of the testimonials, one of the disciples mentioned that TB Joshua recorded each and every activity of his disciples from bathing to almost anything you can think about mm. why would he do that why was he doing that why it's was true. he keeping tabs why it's was true. he keeping abbas kama let me call him on the follow up video time when you have been of his disciples naked he wanted to use them against them in case sorry i'm going to come in now Am I be no? Am I love and like? Am I play video, you know? Sherry, I want pastor here. Mama, so kiniko. 
Asiri wo ba ti ma tu. Kon to ku pa pa. A wo kon moga wo koton sa kwe. Wo she come out. Why can't people come out before he died? Let me now tell you. Because you live in on a, on, on a civil, on civilized country. Which is Nigeria. In a civilized world. The diaspora. If something like this happen. And the person is dead. One my dadjoe. Shembo. One my dadjoe. There was a this man here. The queen. The queen. Queen if funny. I want to buy him. And I want to see him. I want to see popular. I want to see him. 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 They cannot just bring out anything without proper investigation and getting their facts right and getting their witnesses to come out and talk. This is what is killing many of you. Thank you. One Javi Savio Lenny Angel. One we drug book bon koto a la re. One we drug ni no kuto wa book bo ye tofula we draw. One de sheke se. So when you now come out, you gullible Nigerians, you many of you are daft. All you want to do is come out and Dioshi, come out and do you think on social media? You think everybody is daft, and you think all these people will be paid to come and lie? They will be paid. Do you know the risk they are putting themselves and families to for bringing their faces out? Who can do such if they have not been through such? The same thing happened when I had this encounter with that fake prophet from the pit of hell. The celestial prophet. I told everyone what I went through. I told everyone what I saw in that church. You all came out to attack me, to bully me, to lie on it, to manipulate me. But what is sin? You wanted me to keep quiet, but what did I do? Because Jehovah is behind me. Because I stand on the solid rock. I spoke my mind. I made people know that. Is fake from the pit of hell. Is a scam. Many of these Pentecostal churches, they are not what they call themselves. This is why I like celestial churches and Kerubim and Seraphim. They will let you know, I want door, I want in Kota, I want Shani. But say, I want Pentecostal church, they are holier than thou. They are holier than thou. Many of them, they are doing what Pastor T.B. Joshua is doing. Am I communicating? Many of them, they have two behaviors. They have two behaviors. Behavior can show any time is a fake from the pit of hell. The very one behind the camera. They are evil. They are monsters. They are fake from the pit of hell. I'm telling you that for free. And many of them, they will tell you they are philanthropists. Philanthropists, you want to often cover up each other. Because one of my pastors, you want to do it. One me pa siri one ma tun joko so gbogbo wo ton fun yin ton sha nu yen won me pe o ne ma fi gbeja won se be o lo sele lori social media o wuna lo sele la ni awon to to se to se to se speaker now won ma la won se philanthropist o ri buku so nu won me pe nkan buku ton se leyin to ba jade sita e ma le gbeja won pe eyan dada ni o what has what has been evil got to do with being a philanthropist am i communicating it's two different things don't get it twisted Look at that pastor OPM. It's on this table as well. Many people have been crying out. They have been saying that that OPM pastor, he molests them. I want, I want my 14, oh my rape, oh my phone, oh my name, oh my butter. Kill off you want, she shall you want, she will go away. When some victims of OPM pastor came out to talk, you people were attacking them. And she said, that man is a philanthropist. That man is a philanthropist. That OPM pastor is not a philanthropist. He needs to be investigated as well. He will go and pack all these little, little children from the streets in the presence of helping them. Meanwhile, reverse is the case. He will rape them. He will molest them. He will promise them and he will not fulfill it. Why is he investigating? Why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? Did you hear what his victim said? They said synagogue church was like a prison and we window church and we fancy church in your alone and we be fancy in your alone. She got so and we buy at office church in your alone 
because they don't want people to escape because and we push it up hand forces say no no because they don't want people to escape because they don't that it will talk about the church and one of my cut one away from their family and see me call on some man and think one about them are all sick for 24 years that one fake belosina gogu oh no you're not going to make belosina gogu it made demonic search in it shall it go but miracles don't perform here our god is not a violent god those Miracles are fake from the pits of hell. And let me now tell you something. Let me bust your bubble. Don't ever tell me. I want you more. I want you more. Complicity. I want you more. I want you more. One more. Pack bubble. Cut on shit. Most of you. You're going to be a team. 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 You're going my yellow atos ya won. Mo John walk and in and in and in and. You want to buy the new bag? Buy no long one. Come buy the new bag. Long one. To mama wa mi la kukiri. To mama sare mi la kukiri. Bo she marry for yini. Kon she jo awo ibo yena. Abi ko yini. Kon she jo awo ibo yena. Mo manipulate you wani. Many of them they are manipulators. You try mo she ma sofi. To buy the new yon. To mama manipulate the staff one. They would want to come out and talk about you know. their experiences. TV Joshua is a very sophisticated machine operation of even hooking up some of his own disciples with men and with women and record them in the act so that if they decide one day to speak about TV Joshua's atrocities, he will simply send them a record and tell them if you dare will bring this to the public and you call him your spiritual father your man of god continue listening and you never have more than four hours sleep ever it is non-stop it's not uncommon to wake up at four very early in the morning to prepare those that are coming for healing if you have hiv please come out love and like please let my love and like Ken, but... we were basically working almost 24 hours Disciples weren't paid. He didn't have any free time. Sitting around too much, reading too much, sleeping too much was seen as a no-no. Sleep was seen as like basically the greatest enemy to the work of God. He used to tell us things like you have to pray against it, um, you have to battle it. You dare not sleep when you have not ordered you to sleep. Oh, not to my other one person. Who record you? You keep it as evidence. There was this, these pads of white, small, um, like note paper called disciple paper, and that's what he used to give permission for things. He'd have to go to the office. They say, oh, "I'm sorry, I really need to have a quick sleep," and he'd sign a pass for you because if you didn't have a pass, you'd get reported for sleeping. That time when they see anybody sleeping, that person will be in trouble. Mm. There would be times that I'd be falling asleep like this. And he would say, stand up. And you literally have to stand up. And then at times I would fall asleep while standing. There's only one reason why he had to torture these disciples. Because this is torture. This is degrading an entire human being to nothing. This is slavery on slavery. another level. Slavery from the pits of hell. And he made sure that he sabotaged them of any free time. They have to take... Permission so before they sleep. Completely control them. Ah. Hey. He knew if they had a minute to think, if they had a minute to sleep, they would come back to their senses. So he had to make sure that they work like machines. He had to make sure that he puts them in unbearable living conditions, break their spirits, and transform them into modern day slaves. Hmm. Somebody was so tired, he slept, opened his mouth. TB Joshua led four boys. They pee inside his mouth. Hey. We weren't allowed to wear watches, so our time was controlled. We had to go by God's time, so I didn't know what day, month, year it was. The time goes by so quickly, because every day is so similar to the last. You wake up and it's like, oh, it's two years later, or it's three years later. Before you know it, your brain doesn't think like it used to think. His major thing is struggling to control the mind of the people. 
indoctrination. Synagogue Church is a complicated system. We'll clear everything in your head. We'll make you believe that all the knowledge you had before was rubbish. You don't need it to live. All what you needed to live is to be like TB Joshua. We shall talk about faith. I'm 73 years old. Shake bang kata so. And I have type 2. Wani te ba su. Four hours. Bebe ni. Wani ya konsu nja ko la nule. Odi ta wanyo lo to sile nu. That one is a master. His wife. His wife needs to go down for it. That church needs to be closed. Odi ya kot si church yeni. Ah, Nigeria fail you are. In everything. You would just speak for hours. One of my main jobs was writing down everything he said. This is almost like the Bible. It's the words that God has spoken to TB Joshua. You have put your feet in God's words. You are constantly thinking of the quotes of TB Joshua. You are encouraged to memorize them, to chant them. You are to embody those words, be the words, live the words. Whatever he said had to come from God and therefore had to be true. The closer you are to TB Joshua, the closer you are to the kingdom of God. Lack of sleep, cut off from your family, living communally, not allowed to marry, not allowed to date, one high controlling leader who controls everything. Who are you? I'm a demon. You're a demon? Yes. I've got evil spirits in me. you got evil spirits in you? Yes. To be brainwashed, it... It doesn't feel like brainwashing. It's like your brain has been completely rewired. It's like you've took a drug, almost. I will remove the demon in you quietly. 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 Amen. 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 My mind was like a... Like it had been shaken. There was no cognitive clarity at all. It was like all churned up. Nothing made sense. Reality was just skewed completely. Even when something was clearly off, we couldn't see it because you also don't sleep much. You don't really have like the cognitive ability to even